Hi guys, this is Leela. Welcome to my new course that is Linux Basics. So we are learning about the Linux Basics. That is nothing but the Linux operating system. We will learn it and the commands what we will do and the most commonly used commands which will be useful for us in order to develop an application or the for the docker setup and all those things so i am trying to give you an overview of this linux basic commands so you learn a lot more of the linux basic commands how the operating system works the linux os and also the most commonly used commands and all those things you'll try to see it. so before proceeding on to this thing so first we will try to have a basic history of this linux okay so the linux history so i will give you a brief history so i will not go too much deep into this one why? Because our concentration or the our focus is not more on the Linux history. So we need to learn of the basic commands, the folder structure, the file structure, and how the Linux works other than this Windows operating system. Let's try to see this one. So now all the people will be thinking that the Linux was invented by Linus Trivalds. He is a Finnish uh, developer or the scientist, whichever it may be. So he has developed this. All the people will be thinking that Linux was developed by Finnish person. So, but this one is not Linux is not developed by the Finnish person. So Linux kernel has been created by the Linux drivers. So Linux means if you want to know the evolution of the Linux. So the Linux has been came that's journey. The thing is, so it's more, uh, what I guess is more not complicated. It's very long. So during in the 1980s or something like that, 83 or something like that. So we have a something like a GNU. Okay. So GNU. I actually don't know the full form of GNU. Let's try to see about this GNU. Right? Because we will not GNU, right? So here you'll be able to see the GNU. Okay. The GNU operating system and the free software management. And this one is a GNU. Okay, and what is the full form for this GNU? GNU full form. We'll try to use it. We'll try to see it. So GNU is not a Unix. GNU stands for GNU. So not GNU. GNU is not Unix. So something like that. So now let's let's remove this one. So the Linux was developed by actually this GNU, and you'll be able to see this is the logo you'll be having, and now. The GNU is a project, so it came, it came as a free software, uh, what I can say is free software management, something like that. So now, who announced this project is the GNU project, the Richard Stallman, here you'll be able to see that name also. Richard Stallman has started this GNU project. So what is the GNU project means? Right now, the Linux operating system which we are trying to see is nothing but a GNU project only. So I will try to discuss about this one, how the name Linux has been came. So normally we call it as a GNU. If you try to search in the Google, the GNU, you will be able to see it, right? GNU, you will be able to see the GNU operating system. The GNU operating system is nothing but the Linux operating system only. And this one is a free software movement. So this is the movement which we got it in 1983. So Richard Stallman has announced this GNU project in September 1983. So the goal of this is to create a completely free and open Unix like operating system. At the time Unix, Unix was the most popular project uh, operating system. And the goal of Richard Stallman is Richard Stallman is to create completely free and open Unix like operating system. So Stallway, Stallman was motivated by the desire to preserve the spirit of cooperation that was prevalent in the early days of computing where software was shared freely among the users at the time what the microsoft windows and all those things are these are all closed thing so now they what the richard stallman has thought was he thought that software should be shared across the users so in the computing world and all those things it should be shared across the users so that the users can have free of coding free freedom of speech something like freedom of coding like that you need to have so that is one thing in 1985, so the foundation of the soft free software foundation has been came. So to support the development of the free software, Stallman founded the free software foundation in 1985. See this FIS, FSF, that is nothing but free software foundation provided a legal and organization framework for the GNU project 
and advocated for the software freedom. So this is the one thing. So this is how the GNU has been came. So that is nothing but GNU debugger, the GNU compiler, uh, collection, binary utilities. These all the things has been uh, developed in the operating system. But one critical component was missing. That is nothing but the kernel. So this is the one main thing it has been missing. The GNU, Emacs, text editor, everything has been came. But one critical component was missing. That is nothing but the Linux kernel. Okay, so this is the introduction of the Linux things, uh, uh, GNU project, which we got it. Okay, so now when we come to the Linux kernel, so this creation of the Linux kernel, so Lino, Linus Torvalds, so this, uh, this is basically spelling is wrong, Torvalds, okay. So Linus Torvalds, a Finnish student, started working on his own kernel at the time in 1991, which he referred to as a Linux. So he was working on a kernel and he referred to that one as a Linux. Okay. So in 1991, he announced the project uh, in August 1991. So he doesn't have a uh, internet uh, to be a professional or large scale. So just he, he, he was uh, doing as a hobby project. So now in 1992, the Linux has become a free software. Initially that was uh, released under the license that prohibited the commercial distribution. But however, in the 1992, so he, uh, he has re-licensed re the Linux under the GNU that is nothing but general public license. <clears throat> so now the convergence of the GNU and the Linux. 1992 onwards, the merging of the GNU and the Linux has been game. So with the Linux kernel, now the available and the GNU project having developed most of the other essential components of a complete operating system. The two, pro the two projects naturally converged Distribution began to emerge that combined the Linux kernel with GNU tools and software creating a fully functional free operating system. So this Linux kernel combined with the GNU utilities and all those things. So it has developed the fully developed operating system, fully functional free operating system. So that is one thing. Now this is the this is the co combination, the collaboration between the GNU project and the Linux kernel developers demonstrated the power of open source development models and the global community. So that is one thing. <clears throat> and now I want to explain you about the Linux kernel. So this Linux kernel is the core concept is the core of the Linux operating system. So that is one thing also you need to understand it is a core of the Linux operating system. So it acts as the intermediary between the computer hardware and the applications running on it. So the core functions of this one is Linux kernel is the core function of this Linux kernel is one is process management. Okay. And the memory management. So here you can write it as in memory management and we'll be having something like file system management. So these are all the things the device management. So like this, we'll be having everything the Linux kernel will be taking it. So it was developed in a modular design. So one of the key features of the Linux kernel is a modular design. This means that certain parts of the kernel such as the device drivers can be loaded or unloaded while the system is running. So the Linux kernel is developed co collaboratively by contributors from around the world. The kernel is the foundation upon which Linux distributions build their systems, adding application software libraries and tools. So that is the one thing about the Linux thing. So right, right now the Linux operating system is used in wide range of devices from servers to the smartphones. Android is based on the Linux kernel only embedded systems, routers and supercomputers, making it one of the most widely deployed kernels in the world. So that's, that is the brief history of the Linux kernel thing. I don't want to go deeply into this process management and all those things. So this is the brief history of the Linux thing. So normally we call it as a GNU. It's not a Linux, so going on, going on, it has been uh, renamed, it has been named as a Linux thing. That is one thing. So now, before proceeding into this one, so I want to explain you about the three main concepts in the Linux. That is nothing but first one is the terminal and another one is the shell and the last one is the bash. So these two are the concepts which you need to understand very often. So first one is the Linux terminal. So this terminal is nothing but a software. Okay. It's a software which you, it will provide. It's an input output environment that provides a user interface for accessing the shell. So this shell <coughs> is nothing but a soft program. Okay. 
which acts as a shell to the which acts as a shell means so the snail will have a shell right acts as a shell to the operating system so that means if you want to communicate with the operating system is then you can write it only with the shell coding and where you will write the shell coding is in the terminal so this terminal will you will be writing the shell coding and this terminal is a software and this terminal you will be able to access the shell program okay so that is one thing so the lyrics terminal it's a program that opens just a window and allows you to interact with the shell so the terminal allows you to interact with the shell that is main thing terminals previously in world days used to be have a physical devices but now these are emulated by a software okay so examples are genome terminal console exterm many others are there so now you understood about the terminal so now let's try to see about the shell shell is a program that takes commands from the terminal so it will take the command from the terminal and gives them to the operating system so shell take is a program it's take that command from the terminal and give it to the operating system to perform in a nutshell it's a command line interpreter that provides a traditional user interface for the li unix or the linux operating system the shell reads commands typed by the user and it executes them there are several shells available in the linux with its own set of features syntax and capabilities commonly shells programs that are available as bash g shell fish and many more are there so now you may be understand about the bash shell and the terminal now we will try to learn about the bash so bash means born again shell born means you have a born series right mad demons born series that born not born b o u r n e born identity this type of thing is one of the most popular and widely used shell so this bash shell is one of the most properly uh, widely used shell it is by it is the default shell on many linux distributions and on mac os also bash is an enhanced version of the born shell with the additional features such as command line editing unlimited size command history so many more will be there so how they work together in summary what i want to tell you is when you open a terminal application so when you open this terminal application it starts a shell session at uh, which we then waits for your commands if you are using bash means when you type a command into the terminal and press enter bash interprets and executes the command often resulting in the operating system to perform the same task the terminal displays any output from the command the cycle of input and output allows users to interact with the system run programs manipulate files and perform many other tasks so this is all about the difference between terminal shell and a bash terminal means it's a command line interpreter it is a it is a program or a window which will which will allow us to interact with the shell shell is nothing but a program or a software which interacts with the operating system so in order to make the task work and bash is one of the shell program so i told you right shell is a program so we have so many shell programs like in that one bash is one shell program like this we have another shell programs like g shell i already told you right fish shell like that we don't we have so many things out of them bash is the most commonly used in all the linux distributions and also in the mac os <clears throat> so these are the three differences these are the three things which you need to understand the difference between terminal shell and also bash whenever i am trying to when i am trying to tell about this terminal shell and bash and i am i am saying like that means then you need to have remember these all the things in your mind so this is all about the concept about the brief history of the linux in the next video we will try to uh, we will try to see how we can install the linux in our uh, operating system which you are having windows right now i am having windows if you are having already linux means so it's not a problem we will be using the ubuntu software so we will try to use it hope you understood about this basic thing if you have any doubts or any suggestions please post the comments below to this video and if you like this video please do support me by subscribing to my channel thank you